So earlier today, Game of Sutra posted up some very lengthy articles on Xbox Project Scorpio. Uh, the first article covered the Scorpio dev kit, which you can actually see a render of right now on your screen. This photo was actually given by Microsoft, so it shows the Scorpio dev kit in front of other previous dev kits. Uh, you'll notice the LCD screen on the front displaying 60 frames per second, which is what I like to see. Uh, the dev kit, though, is a lot more powerful than what Scorpio is. It has twice as much memory. Memory, so the final consumer version could actually be a lot smaller than this. Uh, it's always easier for devs to have more than enough power, and then that way they can, you know, put in all the assets, do everything they want to do at max, and then scale down for other types of hardware. This is what they do on the PC because it's much easier than already being set at a ceiling. Uh, so again, we don't know if this is what Scorpio is actually going to look like. If you look at past dev kits, some of these look very similar to the actual consumer products. Some of them don't. So we don't know what it looks like just yet. But Microsoft did just announce a hardware event today happening on May 2nd in New York. And that could very well be when we actually see the Scorpio revealed. The Verge is reporting that their sources, which are usually pretty good, are telling them to expect new hardware to be shown but not to expect it to be a Surface product. Don't expect it to be the Surface Pro or a new phone or anything like that. So that kind of limits what it could actually be, and it certainly leaves open the possibility of Scorpio being shown. But the articles provided a few noteworthy items that I'm going to be doing videos on. Too much to do in just one video. So this uh, is going to be about one of the subjects that was covered in the question and answers segment with Phil Spencer. And I, th I thought that this was pretty interesting whenever he was talking about them and their thinking in building the Scorpio. And so one of the things that was mentioned was that Microsoft has been working on Scorpio for a while, several years. Uh, I know some fanboys are out there talking about how, oh, Microsoft just announced this because Sony uh, unveiled the PS4 Pro, so this is all reactionary. They're just doing everything based on what Sony does. But uh, Phil Spencer says they've actually been working on this since they started working on the Xbox One S. They kind of worked on on those together and they actually had two consoles that they were working on they were working on a 2016 model and they were working on a 2017 model and what they wanted to do was be able to go in and tell developers look here's a system that you can take a game that's that's running on xbox one and if it's running on xbox one at 1080p 30 frames per second scorpio is going to run that same game at 4K, 30 frames per second, at a bar minimum, saying, okay, well, it could have better frames rate, but at the very minimum, we want it to at least be able to do 4K resolution on all those games. And he talked about that if you look at the difference between the original Xbox and the games on it, and then look at the games that were coming out at the end of the 360 generation, there was a huge graphical leap, and that was also in part because there was a transition that was happening within the TV segment where everybody was making the switch to HD. They were jumping over to 1080p. Uh, but with the Xbox One, there wasn't this great leap or great jump, uh, and that was in part because the 4K resolution was still very new. Uh, and it's sort of happening right now as we get into this mid-generation. Digital Foundry mentioned that there's somewhere going to be in the neighborhood of, I think they said 60% of TVs sold this year are going to be 4K TVs. And then if you look ahead to 2018, I believe they said the expected trajectory is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 80% of TVs are going to be 4K. So Microsoft wanting to jump on this and have people have a TV that they can take full advantage of. And they said they finally looked at what they were doing with the 2016 model, 2017 model, and decided that there was no way they could really do what they wanted to do in 2016. And so they scrapped that plan and went straight for 2017. Uh, when talking about the PS4 Pro, Spencer says this, quote, Sometimes I get in trouble when I talk about Sony too much, but the choice they made on PS4 Pro, I totally get that choice from their perspective and what they wanted to go do. I've said it publicly. I've said it privately. I think they've built a good 2016 PS4 Pro. With the silicon that was available, they picked the parts that made sense to go and put together a console in 2016. 
But the point is not wanting frame rate to drop when you go to the higher box, right? If the developers want to push resolution to say to the player, here you bought this higher end console, let me show you higher end resolution, you don't want the frame rate to drop. And that was something we couldn't deliver with the silicon that was available in 2016. And uh, I mean, he didn't come out and straight say this, but you can put two and two together probably and notice that he's talking about that's what happens a lot of times with these games that are coming out on PS4 Pro now. Uh, so he continues. So some of it was time, some things come down in price, some of them not as quickly as we would like, and some of it was hardware capability from our silicon partners that allowed us to go and do this in 2017. And frankly, we had to make that bet two and a half years ago, right? You're kind of throwing a dart a long way out because the timelines in hardware are kind of like that. In the case of this, our hardware partner is the same as Sony. We're both AMD partners. So we don't know what each other is doing, but we definitely know the roadmap because we're working with the same partner. And we chose to pick something that said, if you're running 1080p 30 on Xbox One, what does it mean to run that at 4K 30 on Scorpio and make sure that we could do that? Uh, and we're seeing the results that make us feel really good about the choices that we've made. And some developers will come back and say, maybe I don't want a 4K native frame buffer. And we know some developers that are targeting other platforms are doing checkerboarding and other things. And we said, okay, we want to make it easier for the developer to do what's natural for them. So we want to give them the tools to target their rendering techniques that they want to use. Giving developers tools to do the right thing at different resolutions is part of what we wanted to build. Uh, also in the article, it mentions other developers, not simply just first party developers. Uh, we're talking third party here uh, who have also mentioned how it, it usually takes at least two weeks sometimes to, to get a, a game running on a new piece of hardware. And they're saying not only was Forza being able to move over to the Scorpio and, and they had it up and running uh, in under two days, and that's unoptimized, but they had it running in under two days. They're seeing the same results from third parties who are not having to wait two weeks in order to get their games running. And so they're saying, look, you're going to be able to invest all this extra time into making the game that you really want to make. So to listen to Microsoft tell the story, it seems they feel that Sony kind of blew their load early. Uh, they came out with a machine that was kind of rushed, uh, but they were only using the tools that they had available to them at the time. And so they ended up with a machine that doesn't really deliver uh, true 4K most of the time, nor deliver solid frame rates. And so Microsoft said they wanted to deliver both, which meant waiting a year when pricing and hardware was at a place that made sense to be able to do it. And so they're leaving up a lot as far as uh, what devs want to do with the extra power. If you want to make your game 4K, you can. You want to have higher frame rates, you can. If you're already developing a game for the PS4 and so you're getting used to checkerboarding techniques and, and you're wanting to build that game uh, using those same techniques, then they're going to let you redo that there with the Scorpio instead of having to redo everything uh, just to bring that game over. So they want to make it as easy as possible for devs to get their games on the new hardware. So it's definitely an interesting read, extremely long, but I'll do some more videos on some other parts that I thought stood out to me. Post below, do you think Sony made the right decision by being first and launching in 2016, or will Microsoft come out of the better consoles by waiting till they could deliver what they wanted to at the right price point? Check out videogamesandnews.com for the latest gaming news as it happens. That does it for me, The Red Dragon. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.